Loving Father, I am unworthy, Lord, to speak to your people, but Jesus is. And I be hid behind the cross, Lord, and the beauty of who you are shine, Father. Guide us with your precious Holy Spirit and teach us. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, the sermon title is Working with Terrorists. You might say, what does that have to do with Christmas? Why don't you give us a Christmas sermon? It actually has a lot to do with Christmas. You know, Ellen White, she makes a profound statement. She says, God's people are in a stupor. And she says they need to be agitated. Agitated. I'm stuck right here. I usually move around because I'm just kind of stuck right here. But I want to read Revelation 13. Revelation 13. If you got your Bibles, join me with Revelation 13. Revelation 13. We're going to start with verse 11. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb and spake as a dragon. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him. And he causes the earth and them that dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth, in the sight of men. And he deceived them that dwell on the earth by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beasts, saying to them that dwell on earth that they should make an image to the beast which had, which had the wound by the sword and did live. This is a powerful statement. I want to start with that scripture. You know, as we look out at the world, as we look at the landscape of what's going on in a society, would you say the world is getting better or worse? Worse? How many say better? Only one. How many say worse? You know, Ellen White, she says the last events will be Rapid ones. Rapid. That means fast. We are living in a time where things are happening so fast we can hardly even keep up with it. We don't know from one day to the next what's going to come on the news. Am, am, I, am I keeping it real? As we watch what's happening, we are watching prophecy being fulfilled right before our eyes. Amen. Amen. You know, we're living in a time where almost anything goes. Now, here's, here, this is amazing. God's biggest challenge is trying to lead his people. Is trying to lead, if someone's having a hard time. Can you hear me out there? Amen. Someone keeps having a hard time. I don't want to yell at you. The, God's biggest challenge is trying to get his people to follow him. His biggest challenge. Revelation 3. I hope you got your Bibles. They wanted to put it up here. We're, 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 we're lazy now. Can I say that and be okay? We're lazy nowadays. We don't, want, we don't even want to look in our Bibles. We want, our, we want remote control scripture. Revelation 3.17. Revelation 3.17. This is going to be a Christmas story, whether you believe it or not. <laughs> Revelation 3.17. Yeah. Amen. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched, Miserable, poor, blind, and naked. When 
Lord, help us get this. When do we come to a point as God's people where we say we have need of nothing? How do we get to that point where we say, God, we don't need anything? We're good. Thank you, but no thank you. Thank you, but no thank you. How do we get here? You know what we need? We need the power of the Holy Spirit. We need a total transformation. We need a total transformation, brothers and sisters. Amen. You know, I go to a lot of different churches and speak. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, I see things going on in the church with church members that should not be happening. Heartbreaking. You think about this pandemic, it, it has turned God's people into cannibals. I mean, seriously. Vaccinated, unvaccinated. Is that, is that, am I keeping it real? Yeah. What's going on? You know, I have a question. When you think of a terrorist, what comes to your mind? When you think of a terrorist, what comes to your mind? I, I like some participation. I really do. Because I'm not preaching at you. We're learning together. When, a what? Amen. When, when you think of a terrorist, what comes to your mind? <laughs> this brother says a turban. Someone that what? Causes fear. School shootings. These are all great answers. But when we think of terrorists, we think of the height of evil. How many here want to be a terrorist, work with terrorists? How many here want to work with terrorists? I have no takers. No one wants to work with terrorists, are you sure? Unless you're totally deranged and you're thinking. Could it be, oh Lord, help us get this. Could it be when it's all said and done that the masses will be working with terrorists and they don't even know it? Working with terrorists and you don't even know it. You talk about an absolute brilliant, brilliant strategy. Convince people what they're doing is right. In all actuality, they're following a terrorist. It's a profound statement, but you know what? It's reality. It's absolutely reality. Revelation. Chapter 1. Verse 1. Revelation chapter 1, verse 1. The revelation... Of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto his unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent him signified by his angel unto his servant, John, who bear record of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. And he said, blessed. How many here want to be blessed? Are you sure? Are you sure? Yes. Here it is. Here it is. Blessed is any that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. Now, why would God pronounce a blessing if you understand this? Why? You know the book of Revelation. Whoop de doo. Why would God pronounce a blessing if you understand it? Because you can tell others what's coming, yes. Yes. God is trying to help us understand the issues and what's happening. If you're heading for a cliff and you don't tell someone they're heading for a cliff, what kind of friend are you? Is Jesus our friend? Jesus is trying to tell us what's going on. He's telling us ahead of time. 
Amen. Amen. Revelation chapter 12. I like a lot of scripture. You want to hear what God has to say, right? And not me? Amen. Amen. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. And there was war in heaven. Stop. Stop. There was war where? Are you kidding me? You mean the place of love, peace, serenity? God's heaven? There was war? You know what, God's people, we, 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 get the, we get this mentality, been there, done that. Yes, I've read that before. I'm telling you right now, when you approach God's word, you need to approach it with humbleness and sincerity and really grasp what God is trying to teach you. If you come at it haphazard, big there, done, you are going to be led down the wrong road. God is revealing what happened. There's war in heaven. On earth, we're used to that. That's the same old song and dance. But for the Bible to say there was war in heaven? Are you kidding me? This is amazing. Absolutely mind-boggling. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon fought in his angels. And they prevailed not. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And they prevailed not, neither was their place found any more in heaven for them. And the dragon was cast out, the old serpent called the devil, and Satan wished to deceive three people. Fifteen people. I, I love participation. I have a hard time saying that word. The whole world. Do we get this, brothers and sisters? Do we really get this? What is God telling us? What is God telling us? We're in a war. We're in a war. What? Thank you, sister. The majority is going to be deceived. The majority is going to be deceived. I have a question. Are you deceived? <laughs> Someone said probably. <laughs> Excommunicate that person. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. That is how deception works. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, across this great United States of America, as I speak right now, there's people sitting in churches that are deceived. All over. Have no idea. Just another great day. And they're deceived. You believe me? Okay. Isaiah. Book of Isaiah. Chapter 14. Verse 12. Isaiah chapter 14, verse 12. Amen. Are we there? Yes, amen. How thou art fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How thou art cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations. For thou hast said in thy heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit upon the mount of the congregations in the sides of the Lord. I will. This guy, I mean, this dude's too much. Not I might, not maybe. This is going to happen. This is going to happen. This is his mindset. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. Yes, I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Thank you, Jesus. Now we know why there was war in heaven. As Adventists, we know this. Satan 
had perpetrated a full-on assault against God's kingdom. I am going to submit to you today, church, that the first terrorist attack took place in heaven itself. In heaven itself, where this being that God had created had decided to perpetrate a full-on attack against his government, against his character, against who, who he is. And one-third of the angels said, yes, we are with you. We're in this terrorist regime. Let's do this. Unbelievable. Let's do this. Full-on terrorist attack. Now, God, oh, God is so good. God could have just zapped that rat right out of existence. But God had to deal with it. The first terrorist attack took place in heaven. Yes, it did. And the second terrorist attack took place in the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve chose to listen to the voice of a terrorist, he hijacked this planet. Do you realize people all across this globe are trying to figure out what's going on? What is wrong with this world? What is wrong with people? You... Oh, Lord, you realize that God's people, we are the only ones that understand the issues. They don't know. This world has been hijacked by a terrorist. That's the problem. And many people don't even know. They have no clue. Are you with me, church? You have friends, I'm sure, they're trying to figure out what's going on. You know the truth. God has trusted you with the truth. You know what's happening. My question is to you, church, is what are you doing with it? What are you doing with it? Are you trying to help people get free from the tyranny, from the absolute chaos of the terrorist? Are you just go home, turn on your TV, turn on your music, whatever you do, and just live happily ever after? Come to church on Sabbath, an hour, go home, end of story. Do you have a burden for people that are absolutely under the tyranny of this terrorist? Their lives are a mess. You realize suicide is completely off the charts. And I mean off the charts. Depression is off the charts. People are hurting. People are broken. And they can't figure out why. Satan has hijacked them. He's hijacked their thinking. This is very serious stuff. And I'm hoping we're getting what God is trying to get through to us today. Now imagine. Think with me, church. Back to 911. How many remember 911? When America, the great land of the USA, was attacked by terrorists, physical terrorists, and the trade centers were bombed by jets. Now, could you imagine if we had, if we had the info? If we had the information saying, this is getting ready to happen. You think about the terrorist attacks around the world. If we had the info ahead of time, how much heartache and how much bloodshed we could prevent. Think about that question. Do you realize, brothers and sisters, God has given mankind the agenda of the terrorist? God is saying, this is what's getting ready to happen. This is the attack of the terrorist. This is what he is getting ready to do. Are you listening? God has given us the memo, the email, the text. It's called the Word of God. Are we reading it? Are we opening it? Are we sharing it? 
Or are we hoarding it? There's a lot of hoarders. I have rental properties. Lord have mercy. I rent it to a hoarder. Whew. I don't even want to go into that story. But anyways, what are we doing with it? What are we doing? Revelation 13. Revelation 13. Starting in verse 1. Revelation 13, verse 1. Amen. 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 And I stood upon the sands of the sea and saw a beast rising up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the names of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And, key in on this, and the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Who, who, who gave him his power? Who? The dragon. The dragon. Verse 3. And I saw one of his head as was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed, and all the world wandered after the beast. And they worshipped. And they what? Worshipped. They worshipped the who? Dragon. What? What? And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war against this terrorist? Who? Brothers and sisters, get this. God is saying, there it is. Look, right there. That is where the terrorist is going to set up his headquarters. The dragon, Satan himself, God is saying, that is where he's setting up his headquarters. God is revealing us his attack. Are we listening? Who, who is able to make war against him? Are you warring against the terrorist? Are you working with the terrorist? You hear what I just said? Who is able to make war against this terrorist? God's people are... God is counting on you. You do realize you're a soldier, right? You, do, do, did you know that? You seem kind of hesitant. God has called you to be a soldier. A soldier of Christ to fight this terrorist regime. Amen? Amen. Amen. Now, here's what's interesting about this. It refers to him as a dragon. You know what Satan has done? This guy's too much. I mean, this, this dude, I mean, God is greater, but Satan, that, that dude, he's a wily foe. You know what he's done? He has sanitized himself. We can relate to sanitation in this COVID, right? A lot of sanitation. Satan has sanitized himself. I think of my wife's country. They take dragons, they march them down the street. China, dragons everywhere. He's made himself palatable to the people. People dress their children up in Halloween as devils. I hope you don't. As devils. He's made himself cool. We can go to a party. We could hang out. He wears a tie. He preaches from the pulpit. Satan has made himself cool. You hang with me. I'll make you famous. See, he's, he's, he's made God boring. God is a, is a celestial stick in the mud. You follow me, we can do anything you want. He's made himself cool. He wears saggy pants. Are you hearing me, church? 
The masses are following Satan, thinking he's cool. In all actuality, he is a terrorist working out their demise. He's always behind the scenes. He's always in the shadows while he's working out your destruction. That's the way he operates. Satan is not cool. Today, I'm giving Satan a new name. You know when we get to heaven, you'll have a new name. Did you know that? I'm renaming Satan today. Terrorist. So now when you think he's not cool no more, he's not someone to hang with. He wants to destroy you. He's a terrorist. Amen? Amen. Let us get this. Now you think about this, church. <sighs> the Bible says, let us reason together. You think about Cain and Abel. Cain killed his brother Abel and did not even know that he was working with the terrorist. Did you catch what I just said? Cain was working with the terrorist and didn't even know it. Had no clue. None. You think about in the days of Noah. The Bible says every thought of the mind was only evil continuously. Satan had the whole world globally working with the terrorist. And they didn't even know it. You see how he operates? People are working with the terrorists. They don't even know. You think about the Jewish nation. This is mind-boggling. They had the oracles of God. They had the Torah. They had the Bible. But yet, they were working with the terrorists to literally destroy their Messiah. Think about what I just said, church. The church leaders were working with the terrorists to destroy their Messiah. Is history going to repeat itself? One mass movement, religious movement, being worked by the terrorists. You say, Joe, what, what does this have to do with Christmas? You're a stick in the mud. You realize at Christmas time was the first terrorist attack after heaven and after Eden? You realize that? Did you know that? Christmas was a terrorist attack. King Herod set his army down there and killed every single child two years of age and under. Did you know that? It started with a terrorist attack. Wow. Christmas thinks people, it is nice. I, I mean, I, Santa Claus, whatever. Ah. Lord, help us understand the issues, what's going on. Help us understand the issues and where we are in the stream of time. If we are not aware of what the enemy is doing and we're not being conscious and being intentional and studying and searching, we are going to eventually wind up working with the terrorist. Amen. Amen. How many want to work with terrorists? No takers yet? How many want to work with God? Amen. So... What is Satan's ultimate strategy? What? To separate, us from God. separate us from God. Amen. To deceive. To deceive. Amen. To destroy, to destroy us. Amen. I agree with all those. I agree with all those. This is Satan's agenda. His ultimate agenda. Hear what I'm going to tell you, church. A false Messiah, a false gospel, and a false Christianity. 
Did you hear what I just said? What were they again? Get that in your thinking. That is Satan's ultimate agenda. A false, gospel, a false messiah, a false gospel, and a false Christianity. That is his goal. Right there. All being led by him. What did you say, brother? Get rid of Jesus. Get rid of Jesus. Amen. So, if we think about, if this is his strategy, we need to understand it. We need to understand it. Because we don't want to be deceived. Revelation 18. Revelation 18. Verse 1. Revelation 18, verse 1. Are we there? Amen. Amen. After these things, I saw an angel come down from heaven, having a great power, and the earth was lighted with his glory. Praise Jesus. Thank you for that story on light. Thank you for the sister that did that. Thank you. And the earth was lighted with his glory. Praise God. But he cried with a mighty, with a mighty and with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, has become the habitation of devils. The habitation of what? 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 Are you kidding me? This is where they hang out. This is their habitation. This is powerful, church. I hope we get this. I'm hoping I'm agitating you. Ah, what did Ellen White say? We need to be agitated. I want to get us to think. Amen? But I hope you still love me. St. Babylon has fallen, has become the habitation of devils and the hold of every foul spirit and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk from the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich to the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Come out! Come out. Brothers and sisters, God is telling us this system is ran by demons. It's ran by the terrorist himself. But I got news for you, brothers and sisters. God's people are in there. They're in all the religions. All of them. They're in all the churches. But they're trying to figure I have a client. This is amazing. Because I, I love sharing God's word. And he says, Joe, everything you say, because he's really high up in his church and his denomination. I'm not going to mention the denomination. And he says, Joe, everything you say makes sense. He says, I, I want you to come to my church and preach, but they won't let you. They won't let you. He says, what's going on with my church? And I says, brother, I got to tell you the truth. The churches have fallen. I said the Seventh-day Adventist church is more than just a church. It's more than just a church. I said it is a last day movement of God's last call to this world to come out of these worldly Led systems by the terrorist himself come out. You're not going to reform them. It's not going to happen. Come out. It says she's made all the nations drink. They're drunk. Why? Why would God use the symbol of being drunk? I used to drink. Try reasoning with me when I'm drunk. Good luck. It's very serious. God is saying, trying to reach someone in these confusing systems is like trying to reason with the drunk. You're like, what? State of the dead. Whoa, hey, well, hello. 
God's biggest challenge is to get spiritual drunk, spiritually sober. The Seventh-day Adventist church is God's last stand, in my opinion, to get people spiritually sober. Amen. Last stand. We're it. End of story. That's it. Party over. Amen? Amen? So who is Babylon? That's the question. Who is it? Revelation 17. Revelation 17. We've got to keep it scriptural. Not my opinion. Anybody else's opinion. It is written. That's your only safety. Amen. Revelation 17. And there came one of the seven angels with that. The seven vials talk with me saying, Revelation 17, 1. Come hither, and I will show you the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters. With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the habits of the earth have made drunk with the wine of her fornication. There we are again. There we are again. Drunk. Revelation 18. Revelation 17. Verse 3, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-covered beast, full of the names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of the abominations of the earth. There's that cup of wine, false teachings. Upon her forehead was written a name, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw her, and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. When I saw her, I wondered in great admiration. Now, now catch this, church. John is being shown the vision. Now, John knows that the church is represented by a woman. John knows that. He knows that. So he sees the woman drunk with the blood of the martyrs and the blood of the saints. John is completely blown away. He's like, what? Are you kidding me? Their church has become the habitation of demons? John's in shock. Are you with me, church? That's what's happening. The call is come out. So, I have a question for you today. And, and really listen to what I'm going to ask you. Ancient Babylon had a strategy. Ancient Babylon had a strategy to deceive God's people. Amen. Now, if we do not know the attack of ancient Babylon and what was ancient Babylon's method to deceive God's people, we will not know the attack of modern day Babylon. Does that make sense? So what was the strategy that the terrorist was using in ancient Babylon to try to bring down God's people. Let's find out. Daniel. Book of Daniel. This is amazing. The book of Daniel. Absolutely amazing. And we're going to go to verse 1. Chapter 1. Thank you. Daniel chapter 1. And we're going to go to verse 3. Daniel chapter 1, verse 3. Amen. Amen. And the king spake unto Espenzaz, however you pronounce that name, the master of the Enochs, that he should bring the children of Israel and of the kings of the seed of the princes, children in his no blemish, but well favored and skillful in all wisdom and cunning and knowledge and understanding and science. And such had ability in them to stand in the king's palace and whom they might, whom they might, whom they might teach 
the learning and the tongue of the Chaldeans. There it is. <laughs> Attack number one. Bring God's people. Let's educate them. Attack number one. Educate God's people. What was Babylonian's first attack? Educate God's people. What is Babylon doing? It's educating the people. This is the way to God. But it's actually the terrorists running it. The attack of ancient Babylon was to educate God's people. You realize if I educate you, I got you. Look, who said that? Praise God. Satan knows that. All I have to do is educate them. And I got them. Brother, you hit the nail on the head. You think of what's coming from our schools globally. What's being taught? What's being educated to the people? This terrorist knows what he's doing. Trust me. History is repeating itself. Educate the people. That's the plan. Now let's go down to verse 8. Chapter 1, verse 8. Daniel chapter 1, verse 8. It's, under, it's important we understand the sequence. But Daniel purposed in his heart that he would not defile himself with a portion of the king's meat, nor with the what? Wine, which he drank. Therefore, he requested of the prince of the Enoch that he may not defile himself. Number two. Number two. Change their lifestyle. Change what they eat. Change what they drink. Get them drunk. Get them drunk. Satan knows, the terrorist knows, if I can confuse their thinking, I have them. That's why it's called Babylon, which means confusion. Number one, what was it? Educate. What's number two? Lifestyle. What you drink. Is that playing a role in the last days? Is Babylon trying to do the same old song and dance? God's people don't even know it. And he's doing a good job. Let this man come up here and preach. I'm going to go sit down. <laughs> Amen, brother. Amen. Daniel chapter 3. Daniel chapter 3, verse 7. Daniel chapter 3, verse 7. Are we there? Yes. Amen. Therefore, at that time when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sambut, whatever that thing is, the upholstery, and all kinds of music, all the people and the nations and the language fell down and worshipped the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar, the king, had set up. Do you catch the sequence? What was the last thing before they bowed down? Music! Music! If you don't think music is going to play a major role in these last days, I don't, I, I don't know what to tell you. I go to these mega churches because I tell you, brothers and sisters, I have a burden for God's people that are in Babylon, that are in this terrorist regime but don't know it. I go to them. The, the music is pumping. Everything's going. They're jumping up and down. And, and, and it's the moving of the Spirit. It's the moving of the Spirit, but not the Holy Spirit. Music is going to play a crucial role. It's important that we understand this, brothers. If we do not understand the sequence of ancient Babylon, we are going to be deceived. Education. Lifestyle, drinking, music. Does anybody see what's happening? You see what's happening? God has given us the memo. God has told us this, this is what's going to happen. I'm showing you the attack of the terrorist. 
Amen, brother. It's happening. Everywhere. I'm friends with a lot of pastors. Trust me, I talk to pastors. They'll call me and they'll say, Joe, you ain't going to believe this. I said, yeah, I probably will. Tell me. Trust me, I have, I have my, on the pulse of what's happening. This one pastor, bless his heart, he had the band pumping and it, it, it was, he, they're going for it. And I, and I text him from the spirit of prophecy how she said this stuff would come into the church in the last days. The drums and the this and what. And I asked him honestly, I said, is this right or is this wrong? Is this counsel right or is it wrong? You know what he responded? <laughs> this is how he responded. I'm not taking the bait. I'm not, no, don't even go there. <laughs> I, I, I was in shock. This is a pastor. This is a pastor. I said, do we believe in the spirit of prophecy or not? Are we just playing church? Is that what it's just what just one big facade? Is that what this is? Are we following the true God? Thank you, brother. Satan has duped God's people. Even there's a pastor, a, a president. I'm not mentioning names. I'm just telling you what's going on. A conference president, they had to relieve him of his duties. Because he, he had literally come to the point where he disbelieved that the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, was not God. Didn't believe it. But this is where we're at. God is trying to wake us up. Are we listening? Amen. You know, the Bible says, I stand at the door and if any man hear my voice and open the door. Music. Before they bowed down, it was the music. Can I touch on a little bit about music? Would you be okay with that? Listen to this. This is Madonna. A week before the Super Bowl, Madonna described to Anderson Cooper the spiritual importance she attributed to the halftime show. How many listen to Madonna? I'll pray for you if you do. <laughs> I, I, I'm just keeping it real, brothers and sisters. This is, this is what Madonna is saying. This, this is not me. This is her. She says the Super Bowl is a kind of holy of holies. Where, 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 where? Help me, church. Where's the holy of holies? In the sanctuary. Madonna says here it is. Yeah. Just, just catch the issue, though. I want you to understand what's going on out there. How the terrorist is working through every single avenue and leading people. Holy of Holies in America, I'll come in at the halfway of the church experience. She calls the Super Bowl a church experience. I, I'll tell you, brothers and sisters, whether you want to hear or not, it's idol worship. If you like sports, whatever. But if you... Sports becomes your idol, which most people it is. Am I keeping it real? They worship sports. She calls it the church experience. I'll have to deliver a sermon. Madonna says she's got to deliver a, a sermon in the middle of a Super Bowl. Are you catching this, church? This is how serious it is. MTV founder. The strongest appeal you can make is emotionally. If you can get their emotions going and make them forget their logic. The Bible says, let us reason together. So Satan says the opposite. I'll just get them emotional. 
That's why you have all this in the churches. Everybody's all emotional. If they don't get this feeling, if they don't roll out on the floor or something, do a backflip. Do so, Entertain me. You see what's happening? Instead of saying, you know what? I want to change life. I'm very mean to my wife. Lord, help me love my wife. I'm not very nice to my children. I'm mean to my friends. I'm not a good person. See, emotional never does, emotionalism never does anything. Satan knows that. So you got everybody operating on emotions instead of thinking where God wants to change us. Well, we love our friends. We love our wife. We love people. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm going to touch on a couple more here on music that needs to be touched. Elvis. No, don't go with Elvis, please, Joe. Not Elvis. My parents had an Elvis shrine. Oh, they loved Elvis. They loved him. Bless their heart. Bless Elvis' heart. God is merciful. Amen. Elvis constructed a personalized religion. Elvis constructed a personalized religion out of what he read out of Hinduism, Judaism, numerology, theopathy, mind control, positive thinking, and Christianity. You talk about a smorgasbord. You just do it all in. All of it. The night he died, the night he died, he was reading the book Sex and Psychic Energy. You didn't know that, did you? But learn something new every day. Who, you want to hear that again? The night he died, he was reading the book of Sex and Psychic Energy. This is our beloved Elvis. How about the Beatles? Let's hear what the Beatles have to say. Christianity will go. Christianity will what? Go. This is the Beatles. Christianity is going to be history. It will shrink and vanish. I will be proved right. The arrogance. You just wait. We are more powerful than Jesus ever was. That's the Beatles. Uh, now, 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 I touched on, now let's, let's talk about entertainment for a little bit. Ah, Lord, help us get this. Oprah Winfrey. How many know if Oprah Winfrey? Hope I don't get contacted by her lawyers. This is what she says. This is what she says before she acts apart. You want to hear this, church? I'm not going to tell you. I'm just kidding. I ask my body to be the carrier of the spirits of those who have come before me in a way that is most meaningful to the character. Do you hear what she says? I ask people that have died their spirit to come into me. It's on every level. Every level. This is, this is what's happening. How about Johnny Depp? No, that, that, no, the women, they love Johnny Depp. Don't they? Johnny Depp, he's the man. You never heard of him? Good. I, this is what Johnny Depp says. I know I have Demons. I am 30 different people sometimes. Johnny Depp, he, he, he's not even shy. He just puts it out there. I'm demon possessed. No facade. None. This is who I am. I call it demonation. So my question to us, church, out of everything we discussed today, what is God's cure? What is God's remedy?
What is God's safeguard against this full-on onslaught terrorist attack? What is God's remedy? Put God first. His blood. His word. I agree with all those. I'm looking for some specific, but I agree with those. Anybody else? Uh, prayer, I agree with that too. Amen on all those. I agree with all those. Here is God's plan of attack. Are you ready, church? Are you ready? Here it is. The three angels' message. Hey. <laughs> Praise God. This, I want to hug you after this. <laughs> we are it. This is God's strategy. God is saying this is the group of people that have not have been taken captive by the terrorist. This is the group of people that I am counting on to go out there and set the people free. Are you with me, church? The three angels message. How many here know the three angels message? I said, how many here know the three angels message? Can I get a show of hands? Okay, some people don't know. We're going to go there. Let's read it. Because some people don't. Revelation 14. And if you don't know it, that's okay. God is teaching us. God is guiding us. Amen. Amen. Revelation 14, starting in verse 6. And I saw an angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. What did I say Satan's attack was? His, his, his top strategy, remember what I said it was? False Messiah, false gospel, and what? A false Christianity. And that's what Satan has done. He's presented a false gospel. He's presented a false Messiah. And he's presented a false Christianity. So God's saying, here's the real deal. Amen? Having the everlasting gospel to preach them that dwell on the earth in every nation, kindred, and tongue of people, saying with a loud voice, fear God. And give glory to him for the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him that made earth and a sea and the fountains of water. Verse 8. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon. Remember we talked about this already? Babylon. Babylon has fallen that great city because she has made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And there followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. Can I put this another way? Would you be okay, church? Amen. Come out. Stop following the terrorist regime. Come out. Follow the one and only true God. Because at the end of time, brothers and sisters, we're going to fall into one or two camps. Either we're going to be following the terrorist regime, or we're going to be following God Almighty. We're going to be in one or two camps. My question for us is which camp do we want to be in? How many people here want to be in God's camp? Amen. Amen. God has given this church, the Seventh-day Adventist church, a message that is absolutely incredible. Absolutely incredible. It is the last message to a world that has been hijacked by the enemy. A message of mercy. A message of love because the image of the true God has been distorted by the terrorist. People have so many different ideals of who God is. 
Our God is awesome. He wants to heal you. He wants to help you. And he wants to set you free. Jesus Christ is the only one that has the truth. Amen. How many here want to submit to Jesus Christ? Just raise your hands. Amen. Let us pray. Loving Father, you have seen the hands of your people, Lord. This has been a strong message, Lord, but it's your message. We're at the end of time where the last attack of the terrorist is being set up, Lord. Help us, Father. You've given us the memo. You've given us the plan of the terrorist not to be deceived by him. May we rededicate our lives to you, Lord, and to fully and completely surrender all to you. For if we do not surrender all, Lord, we will eventually wind up in the camp of the terrorist. We want to thank you for the truth. We want to thank you for Jesus. Give us a new heart, Lord, and a new mind. You see, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You do the transforming by the power of your Holy Spirit and the power of your word. Go with us, Lord. Change us. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, church.